or a potential threat. Uh, they thought that if these things were uh, let out uh, and uh, uh, if uh, customers were allowed to install these things, uh, that the use of the telephone would actually decline, uh, that uh, people would uh, uh, fear that their telephone conversations might be recorded uh, and they would uh, resist uh, using the telephone for that reason. So in the mid-1930s, AT&T uh, absolutely uh, handed down uh, a memorandum that said that uh, no uh, answering machines would be used. Um, by this time, AT&T's own engineers had developed one and were anxious to, uh, eager to uh, push it forward, uh, but the uh, executives said no. Uh, AT&T's resistance to this thing uh, lasted uh, for about a decade. Uh, other challengers came. Uh, foreign firms tried to introduce these things into uh, the American uh, market. Uh, and the FCC uh, uh, supported uh, um, uh, AT&T's uh, decision uh, to not allow them. But uh, after World War II, that changed. Uh, due to some regulatory changes, uh, suddenly AT&T uh, had to let its customers attach uh, certain kinds of uh, what AT&T called foreign equipment uh, to the lines and uh, sort of opened the door to the use of answering machines. Uh, they remained rare though through the 1970s. Uh, uh, in the 1970s uh, prices were coming down on these things. Uh, uh, Microelectronics had sort of uh, lowered the price of all sorts of uh, electronic devices including answering machines. Um, and more people uh, began to uh, use them. Uh, 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 interestingly, though, uh, part of the reason why they were, uh, remain so rare is that uh, although AT&T uh, had to allow uh, its customers to uh, uh, the, the privilege of, of connecting these things, AT&T was a long distance company. Uh, when you were talking about local calls, uh, the local bell operating companies made the rules and the, and the state or local uh, uh, regulators uh, uh, made the rules. So that uh, in various regions of the country, some of these local operating companies uh, remained resistant to the answer machine and customers who went out and bought one uh, and, and installed it might very well get uh, a nasty message on the answer machine from the phone company uh, threatening to cut off their service uh, unless they uh, uh, took it off. Uh, more common was uh, the uh, situation where the local phone company wanted to rent these things to customers and uh, they charged rather high prices, and that was an important factor in, in sort of limiting the use of the, the, uh, the uh, answering machine. So uh, uh, gradually, though, uh, more and more people began to uh, uh, um, install these things, even against the uh, phone company's wishes. Uh, and by the breakup of AT&T in 1984, the uh, objections to the machines, uh, the will to resist uh, these machines had just evaporated. Now, perhaps uh, the historical significance of the telephone answering machine uh, is not an earth-shattering uh, thing. Uh, it's obviously not as important as something like uh, the atomic bomb. Uh, it's not even another Model T Ford. Uh, that's okay by me. Uh, it's important in several small ways. Uh, and if you consider it uh, in the context of a uh, uh, all the other forms of sound recording that we're also making small changes. Uh, together, I think these equal something of a larger magnitude. What difference did the telephone answering machine make? Well, uh, it made it possible for us to communicate in uh, new ways. Uh, in addition to simply making it possible for us to uh, keep in touch more effectively, uh, it uh, opened up uh, uh, possibilities for uh, slightly new forms of uh, communication. Uh, for instance, there's this terrific uh, academic study that was done uh, maybe 10 years ago uh, that discovered uh, by analyzing the content of messages left on answering machines uh, that we had invented a new form of answering machine speech, uh, patterns for speech that we use primarily on the answering machine when we're leaving messages. Uh, the messages have a particular structure. Uh, they have a certain sound to them, a sort of contrived sound to them. Uh, they tend to have a, a kind of content that's personal, 
uh, but not too personal because you know that out there somebody might be listening to it. Uh, we've invented the practice of call screening, right? Uh, uh, ever since the telephone was invented, uh, Americans have found it, uh, the ring of the telephone irresistible. They, they can't uh, just let it ring and ignore it. Uh, but uh, there's always uh, a risk in answering the telephone uh, that you're going to get an unwanted call. Uh, even in the uh, uh, 1890s, uh, even the turn of the century, there were salesmen and uh, ex-girlfriends calling, you know, people you absolutely didn't want to talk to. Uh, so uh, um, uh, now that we've uh, uh, started to employ uh, a technology, the answer machine, to listen to these messages as they're coming in, uh, we've taken back a little bit of control uh, from these unwanted, uh, potentially unwanted callers. But of course, uh, the unwanted callers figured it out, uh, figured out this little game all, all, almost immediately. Uh, and uh, they invented something, uh, something too. Uh, what they invented was the uh, practice of uh, addressing uh, this, your unseen caller uh, as if uh, you know that they're there. So you get messages of the pattern Hello, uh, this is David. Uh, I know you're there. Uh, pick up the phone. Uh, so uh, we've invented this little new way of, of communicating. Uh, incidentally, this same technique, uh, calling uh, uh, your answering machine, uh, calling your own answering machine, has been uh, recommended for people who have uh, pets uh, who get lonely. If they're alone all day, you call your pet and you say something nice to it because it can hear you through the answering machine. Uh, and it's supposed to be pretty effective. Uh, as a footnote to this, that footnote, uh, uh, you're also supposed to do that uh, to talk to your plants during the day. Although I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if that really works. Uh, at any rate, uh, of course, uh, the recordings you're actually making when you're when you're doing these last uh, things I mentioned are inconsequential. Uh, uh, you don't actually go check those recordings. Uh, but uh, what I think is uh, sort of interesting is that the recording technology is, has been sort of temporarily transformed from a way of uh, uh, temporarily de 